you are one of the 81 MPs who stood up against the Parliament, why? I don't see myself as a rebel. I think if to vote against your constituents was the rebellious position in the vote last week. Look, I'm 37 years of age. I was teething the last time the British public were asked their view about Europe. I was one. You have to be a very, very mature student at the University of Winchester in excess of 50 years old to have ever been asked the European question. And my point is this, the European Union has changed beyond recognition since the European Economic Community was created in the early 1970s. It's time we ask the people. I'm a Democrat, that's what I stand for, that's why I voted the way I did last week. Your constituents, let's talk about them. What have they expressed about Europe? What were their concerns? I've had a huge post bag on this uh, from people just wanting a say on the European question. Now a lot of the people who've contacted me want to say so they can say no, so they can change our relationship with Europe. Of course there have been plenty of people who've contacted me over the years and said they would like to say more Europe or they'd like to say where we are on Europe. But they do want to say on it, and that's the key point. You know, we are Democrats here in the House of Commons, we are elected, and sometimes we should remember that and ask the people a little bit more directly. If we can have a referendum, as we did earlier this year, on the ridiculous concept of or the alternative vote for how we elect MPs to this place, we can sure have a referendum on something that costs billions of pounds each year in subscription to the European Club. Ed Miliband called the rebellion a humiliation for the Tories. Mm. Ed Miliband has his own humiliations on a daily basis in this place, but let's be clear, Ed Miliband's party are split on this issue. There are some of the most passionate speeches in the debate last week about whether there should be a referendum on the European question were from the Labour benches. He imposed the three-line whip as the same as the Prime Minister, and I think he was wrong to do so as well. Should have been a free vote in the House of Commons. It wasn't, but some of us stood up for what we believed in and voted how I think the right way, to give the people a say. That's all we did. This is not head-banging, rabid, anti-Euroscepticism. You know, I've worked in businesses all across Europe. I'm well aware of our place in Europe, but sometimes I think it's been 36 years. I think we should ask the people, and that's what it was about last week. Right. So you're saying you're standing up for your constituents because you want to express what they want, but what would it change for them if uh, well, the relationship with Europe was to, going to change? The relationship with Europe has been really ever closer union ever since the inception of the European Economic Community. And I think the people of this country are uncomfortable with that. And one of the main reasons I voted the way I did last week is to say, look, we've got to stop being these reluctant partners in Europe. Either we're part of this club or we're not. We seem to be constantly at the moment dragged along, kicking and screaming, every new directive, every new idea from Europe. And it sort of sits us outside of the loop. And I think we need to settle it once and for all. Either we're in this club or we're not. Do you fear that this will impact your political career in the future? <laughs> no, not really. I think the last thing that any group of constituents, and especially the constituents in Winchester and the University of Winchester want, is an, an MP who's a patsy who just supinely follows whatever the government whips say. You, know, you have to stand up for what you believe in in here. You have to stand up for your constituents, and sometimes that's really difficult to do. You know, it hasn't made me greatly popular with the government whips, I have to say, but it was the right thing to do. And uh, it's made me far more popular in my constituency than with the government whips, and I think that's probably the right way around. Every MP is ambitious, and if they're telling you that, then they're, that they're not, then they're lying. Of course I'm looking for important roles within the government to have more influence on behalf of the country and behalf of my constituent. There was a huge number of people who rebelled last week. There are some very talented people in the new intake, probably far more than me, who rebelled last week. You know, this party, this government, this coalition can't afford to do away with all of us. And, uh, you know, sometimes there's a conversation within governing parties, and that's what happened last week. The Prime Minister's big enough to accept that and to understand that people have a view and people stood up for it last week and we go forward together as a coalition. The Prime Minister is still head and shoulders above every man and woman in there as the best man for the job. As Prime Minister, he's doing a great job, but on this one, he and I disagree. And in a statement to the Hampshire Chronicle, you said that you wanted a more flexible relationship with Europe. Can you explain? It is government policy to try and renegotiate our, our relationship with Europe. You know, I, I, I think we should be in Europe, but not run by Europe. I do not want Britain to be part of a super state. I do not want it to be part of a political project. I don't agree with ever closer union. I think Britain has some benefits to being part of the European Union, but there is many um, non-benefits to that, and it's costing us billions of pounds a year for the privilege of it. So I think what we want to do is rebalance the relationship between Britain and the European Union. A rebalancing was in the coalition agreement, it's agreed between the two coalition parties, and that's what we're going to pursue. And we are agreed on the back benches and the front benches and in number 10 on that point.